Jeff Smith. I'm a British Army veteran from uh, the 1970s and 80s and I served with the 2nd World Tank Regiment. During the First World War hundreds of thousands of men and women lost their lives in one of the bloodiest conflicts this world has ever seen and I think that should not be forgotten. In this film I'm going to be uh, telling you the story of what happened to one particular unit of men on one particular day during that conflict. I want to say from the start that I'm not an historian, I'm just a veteran who's proud of his old regiment's history and I just want to do a little bit of something to ensure that that regimental history and the men who helped to make it are not forgotten. These trees behind me, they're part of Desso Wood, D-E-S-S-A-R-T, and I'm in northeast France and uh, the town of Cambrai is about 12 kilometers that way to the north. Doesn't look like anything special now, just a wood, uh, but on the 19th of November 1917 there were 40 British Mark IV tanks hiding in this wood, making the tank crews making final preparations for the battle that was to take place the next day and those tanks, they belonged to B Battalion, the Tank Corps. Okay, we've just come uh, into the wood now uh, because the wind's getting up outside and it's affecting the camera. And uh, I've actually found a spot that would be uh, quite a good uh, place to hide a couple of Mark Force tanks in 1917. Lots of cover uh, on the sides and above from enemy observation balloons or aircraft. Uh, who knows, there may have even been a couple here at the time. I just want to, before we get into what was happening uh, on the 19th, I just want to take you back in time a bit and just talk about what uh, the sort of men that they were that, that were B Battalion at that time. Um, just like the other uh, tank battalions, tank corps battalions, the vast majority of officers and men uh, were actually volunteers. And the thing is, um, they didn't actually know what they were volunteering for at the time because the tank was a secret. Uh, in October 1916, uh, there was a recruitment drive for men for B Battalion and I've actually found uh, a description of the sort of men the military were looking for for the, the tank corps at the time. So I'd like to read that out to you and I quote. The physical and educational requirements for Heavy Branch, and it was called Heavy Branch at the time back in 1916, were to comprise good muscular development, a high standard of intelligence and good eyesight as essentials. But short stature and such defects as flat foot or varicose veins were not of themselves to be a bar of selection. Mechanical knowledge or aptitude was desirable but not essential. Still, host, still holds true today I think. Over the winter of 1916 and 1917, B Battalion was developed as an operational unit here in France. They actually had very few real tanks to actually train with, and indeed some of the tactical training 
was done on wooden mock-up tanks. The training was done in areas that were restricted to outsiders because of course the tank was still a secret at the time. When the men wrote letters home, the letters were actually censored to make sure there was no mention uh, concerning the operations that were actually doing because it had to remain a secret. Um, but it wasn't just the training on the tanks that had to be sorted, the logistics of supporting a tank unit that also had to be figured out. Nobody had done it before so all that had to be put in place and also the commanders also had to think of ways to actually use these metal monsters in the field. What sort of tactics are we going to use to employ with these metal monsters, with these tanks? How are we going to use them on the battlefield? Between June and August 1917 uh, tanks were actually put into battle including the tanks of B Battalion um, however the, they had either very limited success or it was just a disaster however the powers of B they saw the potential of the tank and they actually ordered a thousand to be constructed by October 1917 the men of B Battalion assumed that they would be moved to the rear for the winter however they soon realized that wasn't to be the case. If anything their training intensified. Any old tanks that they had were replaced by the new Mark IV tanks and they started training in barbed wire clearance and trench crossing. And they actually uh, intensified their training with infantry. Now many infantry units and their commanders at the time they were very distrustful of the tank. However, um, the fact of the matter was that they needed each other. The infantry, they needed the tank to clear the way through the barbed wire and engage any strong points that were holding the infantry back. And the tanks, they needed the infantry to protect their flanks and to secure any ground that actually gained uh, in battle. On the 4th of November, tanks of B Battalion were required to give a demonstration of those barbed wire clearance and trench crossing skills that they had developed to some very senior staff officers of the British Army. Apparently it went well because uh, the tactics that B Battalion used during that demonstration were actually integrated into the battle plan that was actually going to take place on the 20th November, the Battle of Cambrai. The Battle of Cambrai is actually well documented, especially these days with the internet. You can go onto YouTube and there are a number of films there that will tell you in general terms what actually happened during the battle. However, uh, as I said earlier, this film is all about what happened to one unit, B Battalion, on the day, on the 20th. Um, but before I do that, let me just set the scene, the background to actually to the battle. By uh, mid-1917, the war was actually pretty much a stalemate. Both sides were dug in and there were thousands of men dying on both sides for hardly any gain at all. And frankly, the people back home were fed up with it. The tank corps had a chance to prove themselves on their own terms. The Corps committed all of, their tanks, all of their tanks to Cambrai and together with the infantry they would attack on a six mile wide front uh, and their job was to attack and break through the Hindenburg line and allow cavalry to come through and exploit the ground to the rear. And actually B Battalion they were somewhere around the middle of the attack. So for the next part of the video uh, I'm going to outline uh, what the battle plan was for B Battalion on the, the 20th and I'm now uh, at my bed breakfast location which is actually at uh, In River Court, which is on the left hand edge excuse me, of the battlefield and uh, I've created this uh, no expense spared map which, is, uh, which I've attached to this table with masking tape because nobody should heavily 
house without masking tape is useful for anything. So uh, without any further ado, let's talk about what the company uh, what B is planning for. So here we have a diagram of what B Battalion, together with the infantry, were tasked to do on the 20th November 1917. The battalion would take up positions just to the north of the village of villiers pouriers Here you see where the British outline is. Under the cover of darkness, of course. And please note on this map, there's also German outline posts from the north, or roughly along this line. When the start signal was given, they would advance northwards in this direction, like this. Initially with two companies up front, number six on the left hand side and number five on the right, covering the western side of the wood and the railway line. And the infantry, they would follow 75 yards behind in support and they would advance and take the Hindenburg line, go through the Hindenburg line and farm up here on the blue line which was, which was the code for the end of the first phase. So with the front Hindenburg line secure, tanks from 5 and 6 are rallied around the blue line. Then the company that was in reserve, 4 company, they would get, then come through and advance on the Hindenburg second line here on this side. So they're advancing from here initially north but then going northeast to attack the Hindenburg line here and once that was complete uh, they would also uh, assemble and rally uh, at what they would call around what they would call the brown line on the map. That was the code for the end of phase two. So with the brown line secure by four company, uh, five company would uh, advance along the wood, both sides meet up on the other side of the wood, and uh, six company who were at the blue line, they would supply five companies with any tanks that they needed to bring them back up to strength, and then five company would then advance towards the town or village of Marconing along this way and their objective was the railway bridge over the river up, up in the corner here because this would then allow the cavalry to get behind so once the bridge was secure with the infantry they would then form up at um, a rally point just to the west of the village in the meantime four and six company would wait to here by the brown line and they would be then resupplied and then work with the cavalry and take the villages to the northwest. <laughs> 